There are three audio control panels in the cockpit. Each panel operates independently from the others. The captains and first officers are on the aft electronic panel. The observers is on the aft overhead panel. Communications inside and outside of the airplane go through the audio control panels. Let's look at the audio controls. The audio control panels have transmitter selectors and receiver switches. You push a receiver switch to turn the related receiver audio on or off. You rotate the switch to adjust the volume. Now select the ADF-1 receiver. A light in the receiver switch illuminates when you manually select a receiver. You can listen to as many receivers as necessary. A headset or the flight deck speakers can be used to monitor the receivers. The flight deck speaker and its volume are controlled with this switch. You must select a transmitter to speak on any of the radio or interphone systems. Now push the VHF-1 transmitter select switch. The switch illuminates for the selected transmitter. Notice that the light for the other transmitter is now extinguished. You can only select one transmitter at a time. When you push a transmitter selector switch, it automatically connects the related receiver audio. The light in the receiver switch does not illuminate. You transmit when you move the push to talk switch to the radio transmit position on the audio control panel or the mic position on the control wheel push to talk switch or the hand microphone. The mask boom switch selects the microphone in the oxygen mask or a boom microphone for transmission. The filter switch controls audio from the VOR and ADF nav radios. Set the switch to V for voice only. R for range to hear Morse code identifiers only. Or B for both voice and range together. The audio control panel can operate in two modes. The alternate normal switch controls the operational mode. The normal position is used for a fully serviceable audio control panel. The three audio control panels are connected to the remote electronics unit in the electronic equipment compartment below the cockpit. This example uses the captain's audio system. The first officers and observers systems operate the same way. Normally, when the captain transmits, audio signals from the microphone go through the remote electronics unit to the related radio or system. When the captain receives, audio signals from the radios and other systems go through the remote electronics unit to the captain's headset or speaker. If the audio control panel or the remote electronics unit fails, the captain sets the alternate normal switch to alternate. The captain's system then operates in the degraded mode. Now set the alternate normal switch to alternate. In the degraded mode, the captain can only communicate on the VHF-1 radio. None of the interphone or passenger address systems are available. The captain hears only VHF-1 audio in the headset at a preset volume. There is no volume control in degraded mode. The speaker does not work and all other receiver functions are inoperative. The mask boom switch continues to operate normally in the degraded mode. 
you can use the mic position of the control wheel push to talk switch or the push to talk switch on the audio control panel to transmit with the VHF radio that is active for that crew station. The hand microphone does not operate in degraded mode. This table shows the radio that each station uses in the degraded mode of operation. Now let's look at VHF HF communications. You tune VHF and HF radios with radio tuning panels. The radio tuning panels are on the aft electronic panel. The panels are identical, independent, and may be used at the same time. Each radio tuning panel allows you to tune all VHF and HF radios from each panel location. Also, you can set two different frequencies on each panel. You use these knobs to set the frequencies. You use the transfer switch to select the active frequency. The offside tuning light illuminates whenever a different radio is selected for tuning. Tune VHF1 to frequency 121.900 from radio tuning panel 2. Select VHF2 on radio tuning panel 2. Now select VHF1 to call ground control for taxi instructions. There are two interphone systems on the 737. They are the flight interphone and the service interphone. We'll discuss the flight interphone first. The flight interphone is for the flight crew to talk to each other. The flight interphone is isolated from the service interphone system. There is also a flight interphone jack on the external power receptacle. Ground personnel use this interphone jack to talk to the flight deck. Push the flight interphone receiver switch to monitor the flight interphone. Let's talk to the ground crew on the flight interphone. In this example, we use the push to talk switch on the audio control panel. Now move the push to talk switch to intercom. There are other ways you can operate the flight interphone. You can also use the flight interphone transmitter selector and the radio transmit or mic position of a push to talk switch or the hand microphone. The second interphone system on the 737 is the service interphone system. The service interphone controls on the audio control panel operate the same way as the flight interphone. The service interphone connects all audio control panels and the handset in the cockpit with the handsets in the cabin. You can use the handset on the control stand to talk on the service interphone. 
the handset bypasses the audio control panels and works directly with the service interphone system. The service interphone can also be used for communication between the flight crew or the cabin crew and the ground crew. The service interphone switch is on the aft overhead panel. It connects all external service interphone jacks to the service interphone system. Normally the switch remains in the off position. It is not necessary to set the switch to on to communicate between the flight deck and cabin. Now position the service interphone switch to on. The passenger address or PA system is used to speak to the passengers. You can speak to the passengers from either the flight deck or the flight attendant panels. If the pilots and the attendants speak to the passengers at the same time, the passengers will hear the pilots. Now set the audio control panel to PA. An optional hand microphone may be installed on the aft electronic panel. You use it to speak directly to the passengers. The PA hand microphone does not operate through the audio control panels. The call panel is on the forward overhead panel. The pilots use the call system to speak with the flight attendants or the ground crew. You press the attendant call switch to call the flight attendants. Now call the flight attendant. A two-tone chime sounds in the passenger cabin and a pink light at the forward and aft exit locator signs illuminate. You press the ground call switch to call the ground crew. Now call the ground crew. A horn sounds in the nose wheel well until you release the switch. The flight attendants or ground crew use the service interphone system to call the flight deck. When either the ground crew or the cabin crew makes a call to the flight deck, a single tone chime sounds on the flight deck and the call light illuminates. The light extinguishes when the pilot call switch on the external power receptacle is released. The flight deck number on the handset at the flight attendant panels in the cabin operates the same. The cockpit voice recorder controls are on the forward overhead panel. All flight deck audio communications are recorded on a two-hour solid-state system. Recordings older than two hours are automatically erased. The cockpit voice recorder operates when AC power is connected to the airplane. The recorder records speech on the flight deck through the area microphone and transmissions from the audio control panels. To test the voice recorder, you press and hold the test switch. Now press the test switch. After a short delay, 
the monitor indicator moves into the green band and a tone is heard through a headset connected to the headset jack. You can erase the voice recorder when the airplane is on the ground, the parking brake is set, and AC buses are energized. To erase the voice recorder, press and hold the erase switch for at least 9 seconds. Use VHF-2 to contact dispatch on 124.5. Use the transfer switch to make 124.5 the active frequency. Continue to monitor dispatch on VHF number 2 and listen to the ATIS on 127.75. Use VHF-1 to contact clearance delivery on 124.25 for your clearance. Tell the ground crew you are ready for engine start. Use the audio control panels to speak to the passengers.